Hello, everybody, and welcome to another replay analysis. And we have another muffin maestro analysis coming in, coming at you right now. And we uh, we're not only doing another muffin maestro, but we're doing another muffin maestro cannon rush defense deal with what have you what's going on how do you deal with cannon rush and we're going to see how muffin maestro deals with it and maybe critique what he does tell him how to play better really piss him off <laughs> that whole thing all right nice <laughs> okay By we got way, dude 27 hold on this is 27 minutes is that yeah, what you're gonna say i just realized is this it? We're on one? I didn't actually know. But we can fast forward to a lot of this. Alright, so. well, did I say it's going to take us 30 yeah. minutes? It's actually going to take us two and a half hours. <laughs> I didn't actually know. I'm not going to have dinner, I'm going to have breakfast, basically. Yeah, All right, dude. sure. Oh, man. All right, I'll try I'll try and speed it up. I'll try, like the, the stuff that's repetitive, I'll try to like just quickly touch on it, but move on past. Yeah, 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 sure, quickly. sure. I can I can say while we wait that I'm I'm usually very comfortable uh, defending cannon rushes. I feel like it's something I'm yeah com comfortable with. I usually win the games that that I get cannon rushed. Sure, sounds good. I like I like to hear the confidence. So same thing yeah. again. The probe did win the fog of war and it's chilling, right? I hope you know that it's chilling. Second probe as well. You should are like already right now. This is a cannon rush. I gotta yeah. pause it now because the, the beginning of the game does it needs to be talked about a bit because it is important. So we're gonna take about an hour here. Um, yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, but for real, like the, the probe went up your ramp and it never came out of the fog. Second, then yeah, there's, that's, that's impossible. So you know he's cannoning the high ground. And secondly, you saw a second probe. Okay, so so I'm going to say just what I'm thinking right here. Uh, I didn't see the second probe. I, I it was probably my vision, but I I didn't actually see it. Um, and also, uh, a couple of games ago, I got uh, <laughs> someone put a nexus in my main with a gateway and then recalled all the probes while making cellets and all fucking right. killed me with it. I want it's you, really embarrassing. I want you to walk me through the first 90 seconds of the game. What, like, close your, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Close, close yeah, your eyes. Sure. Okay, that's the only way this is going to work. Close yeah. your eyes and then tell me. What do you do? Like, like the game just started. What's happening? What are you seeing? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. Like, <laughs> like, the, like, re yeah, There you go. <laughs> you see your base. Okay. Now, what, okay. what are you doing with that yeah. base? Well, I'm splitting the probes, making uh, one drone, pulling my overlord to the other side of the map. Okay. How long does it take Make you to do that to make to, to send your overlord over there? Well, maybe two seconds. Okay, perfect. Now, what's your camera doing now? Going back to your drones? Well, yeah, sure. And then I'm making uh, base hotkeys. Okay, oh, how long does it take you to make the base hotkeys? Oh, maybe... <laughs> I won't say three seconds, but it's probably more like seven to eight seconds because okay. I'm really slow. Okay. So you want a tip on making base camera hotkeys? Right. I'll, I'll yeah. open your. You can open your eyes and look at the stream for a second. Yeah, sure. This is uh, so. Let me let me just gauge how good you are on timing. If there was, if someone had a cup in front of you, okay, and they're going like left and right like this with like a cup, like this. If I had a if I had a cup in front of you going like this, like left and right, and I told you I want you to poke it with your finger, like don't go like this and miss it, but I want you to poke it like, like actually hit it with your finger. Could you do that? Could you poke? Such a weird question. No, no, no. It's going to make sense in a second. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, probably. Well, you could, maybe. Okay. You got the motor maybe reflexes. <laughs> the bottle. So here's what you should well, do. I, what's what's up? Sure. Tell me. Wait, what? Tell me. Yeah, no, no, no. Continue, please. Okay. <laughs> so here's how you got to do it, okay? What are your what are your camera hockeys now? Like, how do you bind them? Is it my hockeys? I bind them with... I bind them with... Uh, well, my hotkeys is F1, F2, F3. Okay. And I bind them with pressing F5, F6, F7. Okay. So here's what you got to do. I want you to, when you're, the second you have a moment to spare, and your overlord's already sent off, and you're making your drones, and you're, you're larva capped, or you can't spin anything. You're just waiting. And your, your drones are looking good. I want you to 
get comfortable with the timing of dragging your camera up and around the map and down and stuff. But I want you to center your hatchery on your on, on your, your camera on your hatchery, and then I want you to drag your hatchery in the direction of where you're going to expand. And you, so you can go like this: click your hatchery, hit spacebar or whatever for base center, hit F5, and then just literally put your mouse on the bottom of the screen and time it. So F5, F6, F7, and then you're done. And you don't ever touch it again. It took one second, not even, like half a second. And then you don't, it does not have to be perfect because you're going to fix it again anyways. So if I hit F6, yeah. or if, I, if my camera hockey two is like that, okay? Let's say it's like this. The hatchery's there, and my camera's going to this spot. My third one's right there. The, cam the hatchery's on the low side. As soon as you make the hatchery, like this, uh, we'll get to the point when you make it. So the second you make it, okay? Now let's say you went to your camera hockey number two, and you had, it looks like that. It looks like fucking shit. You're like, oh man, I didn't hit it perfectly. It's okay, because you can grab the hatchery quickly. As soon as you make it, Click the hatchery, click the ca the portrait here in the bottom right, or you, you, can, you actually have to click the portrait for this. You cannot base camera center because centering your base camera only works on active hatcheries. It does not work on currently under construction buildings. So click the portrait like this. It centers your camera. Hit F6 one more time, and you got it. And you got two cameras perfect. Same thing with a third. It could be up here, and you could be like, click it, click it, lock a camera to it. You're good to go. Yeah, yeah. It just when saves I, so much more. When I play a lot, when I have a period where I play a lot, I always do this. But then when I get back to it, like I'm now, I'm noobing around. You should always do. A lot tr of time. Try your best, because if you're if you're trying to like meticulously like line up, like if if it's this <laughs> if it's at this stage, and you're like, all right, well, yeah. what do I think? Is, wait, hold on, a little bit to the right. No, I'm fucking no, a little bit to the left. A little up. Is that right? No, maybe a little more right. And now now bind. This is terrible because it might not even be perfect. It's a big waste of fucking time. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it, it just, you might as well just, you're going to fix it anyways, no matter what. You're going to just make sure it's 100%. You should be at least always making sure it's 100% correct when you build a hatchery there officially because then it's, then it's just like it's, it actually is perfect. But spending too much time trying to perfectly line up a camera here is just a waste of your time. I understand. So, that is going to because I, I don't the, the reason why I'm saying this is because I don't know how you're missing probes with your overlord and I feel like it's because you're dedicating your time to doing things that are not necessary and something like that could I, definitely be something well when the timing of the probes come in I usually hover over my main base trying to micromanage the drones to the to the minerals because I'm still trying to um, imprint it uh, in my okay. muscle I'm, memory I'm, I'm how not to just look at the mineral line, line sure. and just fix it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you to not do that I think it's important that you do that but that's just something that you'll get better at over time and you'll just pick yeah, up yeah, sure. faster sure, because it, sure. that is also important yeah. Uh, but yeah All right. also I have to say when we watch this now my response here to try to kill the cans because I'm going to try to kill the cans with my probes I never do this, so I always do what you do, usually. Yeah. Make the spawning pool, take gases, make road shore, and... Sure. Three... Three... What do you say? Three... Ravagers. Yeah. Yeah, Ravagers. Yeah. But I kind of freaked out because it was on the high ground, and I also... I, I saw this right now, that his probe was locked inside. Yeah, this guy, uh, he, he just gave you the ability to stop this. If, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if you pull, I, I want to see how many drones you pull in a second. Let's just see it. I'm going to see Way too many. He actually, okay, he canceled a second one? Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. You actually yeah. pulled an okay amount of drones. I'm okay with this. Yeah. And now here's how this should go. If you can get on, if you get on a cannon, okay? When a cannon is mm -hmm. just starting, three drones slowly kill a cannon faster than it builds. Yep. So if you put yep. three drones in a cannon when it starts, you will always deny it. If you, however, every, every, pretty much you want to, what you have to look at is every 25% further along the cannon is gone. Or maybe even like, it's more like 20%. 20% is more fair. Every 20% yep. of production, the cannon is already finished. Add a drone to that. So if the cannon is 20% done, 
If you put four drones on it, you will guaranteed kill it before it finishes. If it's 40% of the way done, you put five drones on it, it will kill it before it finishes. 60% of the way done, six drones on it, it will kill it before it finishes. Etc. 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 All the way to a whatever to the, to the final finishing cannon. Sure. Now, what I would have said that would be a great way to deal with this, or um, you know, right when you did it, was the second he canceled a pylon like this. This already tells you, oh, wow. Your cannon's exposed. I can kill it. Okay, let's go. I'm going to jump on that cannon. That is 100% going to happen now. I would I prove so much of pulling your drones. I would say do not pull your drones if he leaves pylons in front of it because you will never break the pylon before the cannon's done. Of course. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So pulling your drones is great. Now, the second he canceled the second pylon, it's even more crazy. But you could have, you could have, if he never canceled the second cannon, pulling three drones would have been perfect to kill the cannon and maybe like a fourth drone to attack the probe. Yeah. And that would have been fine. You pulled uh, five. Five is actually not enough right now because he started a second cannon and he also has a probe still active. Now, mm -hmm. you should always, this is something that lower tier Zergs will always fall victim to. And I'm telling you right now and everyone listening, do not let this become what happens to you. Every time a Protoss builds a building, you need to pl play like a game of memory. And what you need to do is, is you need to click that fucking building. Take a second to click it and go, is that a cannon? Yep. <laughs> and now when you get more advanced, you can actually tell what a cannon is and what a pylon is based off of how build time goes because a pylon has about half the build time of a cannon, roughly. And not, not quite half, but it's, it builds a lot faster. So the pylon hit point bar will fill up quicker. And once you get used to, re to reading that, you don't have to click buildings anymore. That's very advanced though. But you should just click the building, no matter what. Just click it. It'll tell you if it's a cannon or if it's a pylon. Because the last thing you want to fucking do is put three drones on a pylon. And be like, why is this thing not dying? Oh my god. And then suddenly you, a cannon over there is actually done that you could have killed, but you wasted your drones time. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Like, always click the building and make sure you're killing cannons, not pylons. And yeah. then uh, always, always, always try to chase the probe with, like, a drone. And if you if you get really good at it, two drones because what you can do is is if you if you uh, properly put the correct drone allocation to cannon and you always keep killing them if you have two drones attacking a probe one chases it and one cuts it off and attacks it cuts it off and attacks it you will always kill the probe and the second the probe's dead it rushes over yeah so this yeah. two i always or usually always do this okay. is quite the exception for me yeah uh, but i click the buildings at least that's good. That's that's, uh, that's that's the most important part <laughs> of it, honestly. I so like almost killed a probe here. So so th this is the proper micro here, I would say. You should try to squeeze three drones because I think you can. If your if your drone re drones are lined up perfectly, where the drone on the right is touching the second cannon, the drone in the middle yeah. is there, and the drone on the left is hitting the cannon, they could all hit the lower yeah. cannon, and then you mm -hmm. should have another few drones, like another three drones, attacking the second cannon. And yeah. if we look at the rules, though, where you did not actually have your drones, this is this is one of those things where you have to kind of like make do. And this is this is how I'm going to explain it. If you you actually have no way to put more than three drones on that first cannon, it's impossible at this point now with the way yeah. he built that. So it's you're and you're putting your drones on it when you should have put four on it, but you can't. So that means that there's a bit of a like a oh shit moment here where you got to do deal with it in some way that makes sense. Instead of putting three drones on the cannon to the right, I would say it would be a good idea to put four drones on that cannon because if you would have put four <laughs> drones on that cannon right away when it started, you would kill it exceptionally faster than it builds and you would deny it quickly and it would create this opening where you can now put all of your drones on the cannon that's building and get rid of it fast. Yeah. Yeah. But right now you can see you have two drones attacking the cannon and three drones kind of just being like, ah, we're chilling. Because you, you try to move them in there and then attack the cannon and the, the pathing was kind of fucked up. Where there's a little bit, there's a little bit of an open area on the drone, that's on the right between yeah. the cannon, and it yeah, can't yeah. quite get there. Anyways, there's just a lot of wasted time here, and realistically, what we're seeing is only two drones attacking a cannon. Yeah, I, I also realized I could be able to have three, three drones attacking here, and that was what I was trying to do. But yeah, <coughs> the best way to micro so the way to micro this to fix it. <laughs> Would would be this. Uh, right. I'll do it right here. We'll go back to the right when it happened. 
<laughs> okay, so he put a second cannon down. Right now, you should click it, and you should just do the math in your head, okay? Like, you should go, okay, first cannon, I'm not on it right when it starts. Automatically, we're going to need another drone for that, because I, uh, it, it, it's been down for a little while. It's already, it's already fucking 40 hit points, basically. Uh, it's, it's going up a bit quickly. Um, so if I go, okay, four on that one for sure, three on this one, and one for the probe. That means you could just, I would say automatically, you need to pull eight drones. Just looking at this. Uh, and then what I would say would be a great way to do this is you go a little bit further. He builds that now. Attacking the probe, I did not mind it at first. You almost killed it. He's also kind of in your way. You got you got him the fuck out of there. You're know, like, all right, probe, get the fuck out of here. Uh, your, one of your drones could actually kill that probe right now, but you actually told all your drones to it to move in to the crack. This is something yeah. that you'll get better at over time with, but with just more micro experience. But your drone in the back 100% could totally kill it. Either way, let's just forget about that. If you move your drones right now into the crack where the opening is, and then you green boxed more drones on the right side, and you did you tried your best to green box all but three, which right now, if you had eight here, would be you'd be grabbing five, obviously. You could have five drones attacking the cannon, or four and one on the probe, that would also be fine. And then three drones run into the crack and attack it. Now let's just say this happens, where your drones get awkwardly placed like this. If you had yep. three in there and you, it was the same thing where it's like, let's say one of the drones that you see how there's two drones in the back that are trying to squeeze through and can't quite do it. And let's just say it's on either side. All you have to do to fix that is you tell your drones that are there to attack the cannon for a se just like half a second. Not the one they're already attacking, but the one on the right. It will shift one drone as close as possible to the cannon on the right because it will get close enough to attack it. It'll melee it. And as soon as you do that, you then immediately tell the drones to attack the cannon on the bottom again. So it'll make all the drones shift to the right and then re-spread re to the bottom cannon. And it will make them spread out properly. That's all you'd have to do. And then meanwhile, you know, the, the other cannon will get denied and then you would get rid of it entirely. Because you'd have, like, the, enough drones, the correct amount. Because what happened is, is you didn't pull enough initially and then you pulled way too fucking many. You pulled, like, another eight. Like, now. Yeah, you pulled, yeah, you yeah, pulled yeah. literally eight now. Which now you have you have drones just you have like three drones, actually you have sorry you have you have yeah, yeah. six drones Four, doing nothing, because you have you have three on the left, and then you have three more running in circles behind the pylon. Yeah. And they're all each, yeah you have you have six drones seriously doing nothing, and the cannon still finishes. Yeah. yeah. And now here's another tip, for all you Zerg lovers out there, best way to micro this. This is not easy, but it is so fucking good. I would say the best way to do this would be if you clicked the right clicked the bottom of the cannon and that little open gap with your drones and then immediately a moved it as soon as the drone spread out nicely and fanned all over it. And then the second the cannon shoots a drone like this, you tell it to right click a mineral line or just literally right click away from the fucking cannon. Because here's a trick about cannons that a lot of people may or may not realize. A cannon takes three hits to kill a drone. Because it does 40 damage, or sorry, it does 20 damage and a drone has 40 hit points. But you have to take into account that a drone regenerates one hit point between getting shot. So it actually has 41 hit points, essentially. So a drone will not die in two hits, it'll die in three hits. Now, there is, a, there is also a reaction time you have to account for. For being a human being, we are not fucking computers. We're not able to do shit within one millisecond of it happening. You have to look at a drone, identify which drone, which drone got shot, and then also physically click it. And you can usually do that within the attack speed of a, a cannon's attack, which is 0.89. Especially if you're looking for it. Like you're expecting it to happen. It's going to happen. So the cannon shoots one drone. You then try your best as quick as you can to grab that drone. It will then get shot a second time as you grab that drone. And you can then move it off of it by move just some type of move command. Just do not a move it. Move command to the mineral line or move command away on the creep. If the Protoss player does not micro that cannon, it will stop shooting that drone because that drone becomes a neutral target. It is not a hostile target. And it will then shoot the next drone that's attacking the cannon. And you can do this with every drone. And you can literally, if the Protoss does not physically micro it himself, you can make like, if a cannon's like this, you can have like four drones that are one hit point that are regenerating back up to full again. 
But four drones do not die, and their cannon dies. And no, like, no drones die here. You can crisis manage that shit. If it, if, but however, if we put out some micros, he'll kill your drone still. Because he, if he physically tells the cannon, kill that drone, it'll kill the drone. But a lot of processes don't do that. They just will be like, oh, fuck, my cannon died. <laughs> so that's a tip. That's a good tip. Yep. You can see the cannon here kills what looks like four drones. And that's, you could have saved four drones right there, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Told me. And it's the same thing, same problem again on the bottom. There's, uh, there's just, you have, you don't have enough drones on the thing. Because uh, once again, imagine if you had eight drones and you microed it perfectly, like I said. Like if you did the math, you went, okay, one probe, four needs to be on that one now because it's extra time on it, and three need to be on that one, the cannons. Eight drones are actively fighting. And now you get rid of the cannons initially really quickly. And then he goes down to the low ground and he tries to build two cannons on the low ground. But because you got rid of the top ground quickly, you immediately get on the low ground cannons and you deny those as well. Meanwhile, you're still chasing the probe. And let's say you now kill the probe with the one drone or two drones on it. Suddenly, cannon rushes over and you're good to go. This is just too many cannons having too much time to build and not enough assertiveness with your drones. Yeah. Totally. And this is, this is seriously going to just fuck you for the entire game now. Because these cannons on the low ground are officially going up. And this what this means now is your natural is dead. And you cannot stop the cannons on the high ground from denying your gas. Mm -hmm. That sucks. <coughs> uh, Alright, we'll speed it up now. This is, this is like a really awful position to be in, but yeah. Yeah. Luckily, it's... Uh even worse than me, this guy. Uh, the, the biggest problem about him is he's overcommitting. Like, yeah. the second he got that, uh, the, like, he's already made a lot of cannons here. And I would say as soon as he got one of those cannons up in the low ground, or uh, two cannons is actually okay because you've pulled drones and you're super committed. And then once he built that one cannon on the high ground, I feel like that should have been it. The one, that, the, the one that's already done, not the one that's finishing now. Because he could deny your gas with that, and he can cover the pylons on the high ground with that. And then he, he, what this is really going to do is, is, is it's going to buy him time to just keep you fucked over. But he's making another cannon, and he's also not expanding. Like, he's... Yeah, yeah. yeah he's putting himself into this, like, one base shit. So it's not yeah. good for him. Also, uh, I think you're killing the wrong cannon first. I think you should be actually be killing okay. the cannon above. Because the cannon below, the only thing it does is it kills your gas. The cannon above, it kills your mineral line. That's why like the reason why I said it's it's over it's too much is because you should be able to have denied that. Like your like your uh your queen, for instance. Or did you have one? No, you didn't have one. Yeah. Well I made one. Well you make one now. It's kinda late. Uh, like you could have made it a long, like your roach horn's already done. You could have made it a queen a long time <laughs> ago, and the queen could yeah. have very easily killed that cannon before it finished. Which is why it's like it's stupid. It's unrealistic that he should have been, even tried to do that. It's just yeah. him being super greedy, being like, "I'm gonna kill everything. <laughs> it's all gonna die. Fuck Zerg. <laughs> I only make probes and cannons." <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're getting rid of the cannons. Right now, you should yeah, be making. I uh, even lost. I even lost the Ravager here. Yeah. It's so bad. And you're also attacking your hatchery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at your hatchery. You just shot it to. What? You shot 260 damage into that bad boy with the Ravager. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I'm fucking this up so badly, but. I finally realize that I can just attack it from the right side. Yeah. Uh, perfect way. I think I feel like that went to shit right there because of line of sight, and the reason why is because your overlord died. Your overlord's yes. flying into it. If your overlord didn't die right there, and your overlord would have just chilled, 
Imagine if an overlord was right here, okay? And then you actually had line of sight up the cliff. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's because the, the line of sight is larger than the cannon's attack range. You could have corrosive biled the both of those cannons in the middle of them, and they couldn't have attacked you if you did it from the bottom of the ramp, yeah. as well. Um, it's just it's just that same thing. It's like this is the I'm not gonna lie. Every time I watch anybody and coach anybody, it's always the same thing. It's everyone getting flustered because, it, it and it's because there's not like a clear plan. It's just it's reacting to what you're seeing, rather than having a plan before you. Like you know what to expect and what to do if someone does something. It'd be like it'd be like saying, "Here's another analogy for you. Imagine you have, uh, like, there's a plant that has an antidote in it for venom, and a snake fucking bites you and it it, it fucking injects venom into you. And someone says, "All right, so there's snakes out here, but just know that if a snake bites you, it's venomous. But if you just, uh." Use that that herb over there and r wipe it on your the, the bite. You're fine. It'll it'll completely negate it and you're fine. It might hurt, but it'll go away after a couple hours and you're gonna be totally fine. And or imagine if someone says, like you're with a friend that has no fucking idea what he's doing and you get bit by a snake. He's like, holy shit, dude! He bit you. He bit you. What do you do? What do you do? Oh my god! I don't know what to do. Oh my god! You got poison. You, you might die. Oh my god! And it's just panic, and you're like, I don't fucking know. That's the problem with everybody on StarCraft is they don't know what to do, so they fucking panic. They're like, oh god, do it something now! Everything is falling apart. So great. Like just like a little bit of a little bit of just like patience, letting your hatchery yeah. take an extra like 500 damage to wait for the Overlord to show up to use the Ravagers. Suddenly you kill all the cannons and you lose no Ravagers. But instead, going shit, 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 cannon, 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 moving up the ramp. Oh fuck it, my queen died. Overlord died. Two Ravagers died. Uh oh. Hatchery's gonna die now too. I'm actually looking elsewhere, which is why they just ran to it. So. Yeah. But I see what she's saying. Man. It, and then now those spines. This is basically like, you know how I just said there's an herb you can wipe on the snake bite and it fixes it. <laughs> this is basically your friend saying, I don't know, maybe I should piss on it. What if I piss on it? Will that work? I don't know. Let's find out. Luckily for me, it did work. <laughs> oh my god, it, it totally shouldn't have <laughs> worked. Then I lost my main. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> say, like, making that many spines is just like, that's fucking painful. And then I lost my roaches. <laughs> yeah. This is such a shit show. And I win this game, which is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's because awesome, dude. Never, You're resilient. Never took a, an expansion. Yeah. Or he did now, but and he's over committing so much this game into my my defense here. Oh, I, I I think you're both over committing in your a lot of yeah, yeah, ways. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> I can see a lot of mistakes on both sides, but yeah, like for you, uh, it, like it's something as simple as if you just dealt with the cannons a little bit better with your drones, because if if you just watched the drones with your overlord you could have yeah. prevented this entire thing in the beginning because he, if he opens up forge first and you go oh the fucking probe disappeared and he's not coming into my main base and you you're like <laughs> i know what he's doing cuz you paid attention to that and you send a drone yeah. down next to the pylon the first pylon that he's building you can be like yeah. your drone's like eh, you're just standing in the way of the pylon wall being built all together and suddenly he can't cannon rush you at all yeah and now you now you're just like a nice forge opener Dipshit. <laughs> and then, you know, it's just, it's easy as fuck for you at that point. The game just, like, becomes a free win. Yeah. And he lost both his immortals here. Like, that was impatient again right there. By you. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, 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 I'm gonna get my gummy bears, dude. This, this, whole this, is, game this game's is basically getting, just like this. This game's getting good. I need some gummy bears. <laughs> this whole game is this back and forth like this. And you know the ending? The ending is him saying Serg is OP. <laughs> oh yeah. Zerg is fucking stupid. <clears throat> OP units or something. Um I would say the scariest thing I think for you right now is you don't have enough queens. Yeah. If he wanted to, he could seriously like here's the thing. Imagine if this guy thought like this. What if he was like, you know what I have? 
I have Stalkers and Immortal and Void Rays. My opponent has Roach, Ravager, Queen. What if I dive the Queens with my Stalkers and my Immortal and my Void Rays all at the same time? His Queens will hit my air units because it's, it's, that's just how Queens work. And his ground units will hit my ground units, which means that all my units will be focus firing. And all of his units will be split upon my army. Like the Queens and Roaches and Ravagers will split their damage. Now. But now I'm going to kill those Queens and I'm going to lose my Stalkers and Immortal in the process. I'm guaranteeing that those ground units of mine will die. But if I kill his Queens, he can't save his expansion and he will lose an entire mining base. Yeah. He could totally do it. Right? He could 100% kill your queens right now. <laughs> yeah. But he's really passive about it. He's like, nah, fuck it. It's because he's not thinking about trades and how to get ahead here. He's thinking about the whole fucking win. He's like, how can I just win the whole fight here? And if, yeah. he, ju if he just loses the fight but wins... Like, he would literally... consider it would, it would be considered a loss in the fight, I would say, if he threw away all of his roaches... Or, sorry, all of his immortals and stalkers to your roaches and queens. Yeah. And all he, all he kills... Is your queens because that's a good trade for you, but it's a bad trade if the result of that is you lose your entire mining base. See how he's killing the he, yeah, he's kill like he's actually you you have to split your DPS in half. It's just how it works. Queens fucking suck yeah. at killing ground units. They're way better at killing air units. It makes just sense for them to kill the air units. But he's allowing the Immortal and the Stalker to fight the Roach Ravager. When he should be killing your Queens. And now all, the, all that he's getting as a result of this is he's losing his entire army. Yeah. Oh, it didn't make any sense. And then he laughs about it. Oh, please. Yeah, he blames, blames the race. That's just how it goes. That's how most people are. Yeah. Most people, most so people nice. don't actually try to like. It's like you know what this guy is. This guy is a kid who sees a circle hole with a square block, and he's like, yeah. "Why well, don't it go in? Oh. Come on, OP game. OP game. game. Someone didn't build this the right way. <laughs> this is stupid." And then he throws it on the floor and walks away. When there's a circle sitting on the floor right next to the square. <laughs> and if he just thought about it for a second, he could figure out a solution. Yeah. And I do the exact same thing here, just walking across the map and taking a lot of damage. Like, I would just have chilled a little bit. Why didn't you say he'll be Protoss? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I shoot him. No. I think you're definitely playing impatient too, yeah, for sure. Like, um, yeah, yeah. you should, like I said before, Queens, because you're going voids, would have been, uh, safer. So that, that, what I just said can't happen. Um, yeah. Ravagers are not good here, honestly. I think that's scary. Oh. <clears throat> um, I would say because he has a Stargate, I would be very scared of his follow up. I would love for you to have an Overseer in his base. Because you don't know what he's doing. Yeah. I have no idea. Like, if you go to this fucking sky toss, you just auto lose now. Hmm. Uh, Hydra's also would not be bad. It, I would say either Hydra's blindly or scout him and figure out what you want to do. Like, Spire might not be bad. But yeah. if he's got I Stargate tech already, yeah. If he's got Stargate tech already, I'm super scared for you to go Ravagers like this. This is also a mistake. You shouldn't give oh. a shit. You should not give a shit about his proxy. <clears throat> this is uh, one of those things where time is of mo the most importance. And you should definitely be once again changing scouting him. And, like, really just scouting him. <coughs> because if he, if he has something... If he does have something that seems vulnerable... And you're investing into an army like this... You should try your best to punish that. But... Again, I don't. I don't really just don't like the Ravagers, dude. Like, I like the three Ravagers early against cannons, but I think going mash Ravagers is a massive mistake. Yeah. Really, what I want you to do is I want you to scout him. I want you to expand. I want you to go Hydras, and I want you to get a good economy. And then I want you to make sure you have a better economy than he does. And I want you to see what Tech is doing. 
I have no idea why I didn't make hydras this game. Like it's it makes so much sense. Well, hydras are just it, it, in terms of low economy. Hydras are better at dealing with more things because you both have no economy really. Like it's becoming something now, but it's 17 minutes and you guys are at 50 fucking workers. You guys have <laughs> both had no economy most of this game. Sorry. Uh, video on YouTube and people on stream. I apologize for shoveling gummy bears and gummy worms into my mouth. I'm just pretty hungry. So <laughs> I'm just eating gummies. That's very nutrient and um, nutrient rich. I know. Food. It's got a, a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. Okay. This worked out, but it was risky. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Again, if his void rays were in position, he could have just literally zoned you out entirely. Oh my god, you almost killed void rays with the bile. Yeah, I know. His army composition would get trashed by hydros, though. Yeah. Imagine if you had 179 supply. Of Hydra. You just win the game. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. Long story short. I think this replay. It, this is one of those situations where uh, we can talk about it. We, we, are, we are minorly talking about certain things that are happening right now. But... Mm. This game, the specific scenario of this game, is so rare. It will happen to you one out of a hundred games. And a lot of this a lot of these problems could have been avoided with just a better early game. Yeah, I agree. Um I agree. But again, if you ever get into situations like this, just know that you really like I harp on you about scouting all the time with changelings and zerglings and stuff. About knowing what's going on, but this is even more important at this stage. Because, going like I said before, going Roach Ravager, if this guy just went like two Stargate Void Ray, you just automatically lose the game. Or shoot, like just multiple Stargate of anything, really. Hmm. So, you really need to up your scouting, uh, especially in yeah. situations like this. Okay, okay, I know. I'll um, focus on scouting. Dude, yeah, baby. Next I'll, time I I'll try it, I, I said that uh, uh, last analysis session or coaching session as well. You did, I yeah. So <laughs> because I'm just I'm just seeing you have like a lot of risks here, with so many risks. Yeah. Like this is another one right now, because yeah. you're walking into a base that's blind. You don't know where he is. Wait, hold on. D did he just kill your hatchery? Never mind. I'm just kidding. This I, I take it back. This is actually okay. I take it back. He killed your uh, your proxy hatch. Wait, no, hold on. Okay, it's kind of risky again. No, yeah. took too long. Yeah, exactly. You waited until after it was already dead, and now his army could be anywhere yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I'm also realizing that my roaches is, is not. Oh shit! I, uh, you see that? Like the roaches was supposed to go to the left side, like they do now, and yeah. attack the the bottom base or like the six o'clock base frame. I like it. That was, that was the idea actually to just I, pull the army up to his second base and take out the. I, the six I love it. I love that you're do, trying to do yeah. stuff like that. I just don't love that you didn't scout before you did it. I want you to have like, yeah. I want you to know where his army is, and then I want you to initially attack, uh, yeah. and then and then pull him around, because the f if your first army walks into his army, like because you gave him enough time to get back to his base after he killed your hatchery. Mm -hmm. And if, he, if you walked up that ramp, and let's just say he has, like, uh, fucking, like, two sentries and, like, three mortals up there. And then mm -hmm. his army is actually at his uh, third base, in between all of his bases, his main army. And let's say he puts two forest shields on the top of the ramp. Because he's like, you're not coming in my base. And then he realizes, oh, shit, I'm so close here, though, with my whole army. And he's, like, trapped. And he puts, like, two more forest shields on the bottom of the ramp. And your roaches are all just stuck right there. And you just yep. lose like 20 roaches just because because you didn't look where you were going before you went there. It's like it's like putting your hand over your face and running across a street. <laughs> like you don't know if you're going to make it, dude. 
Fuck, it's scary. <laughs> Have you ever seen the music video, uh, Prodigy Voodoo People? No. You should no. You, you should watch that. That's how I. That's how honestly, I feel like you're one of those people in that music video, with the way you've been playing Starcraft lately. <laughs> You'll understand what I mean when you watch it. If you watch it. What What did you call it? The video. It's. I'll, I'll write it. So so. There you By go. the way, my, oh, they have voodoo people. I think. By the way, my my mouse scrolling just stopped working again, like randomly. It's so weird. I think you might. When's the last time you started a computer? I don't know. Didn't I say that earlier? I don't even. I said when's the last time you started a computer, but then I said, I think I asked you that earlier too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That maybe uh, no, no, no. your mouse is dying. This game is such a shit show. It is, for sure. Yeah. Like Hydra's again would be a superior to Corruptor only because yeah. I only say that because this game this game is a low eco game. This game is like a fucking yeah. slugfest, and Hydra's are more versatile against everything he has, because Hydra's would be good against his Void Rays and also good against Stalker, Immortal, Archon, Zealot. Corruptors are yeah, good against yeah. Voids, but you're in a situation where you've made so many, and you're like, well, what the fuck do I do now? I just like piss on his base. Well, the idea here was to go Broodlords, but I never started the started the hive, so Yeah. <laughs> I think I think if you Terrible. I think if you would have scouted him and let's just say hypothetically you're like, I can guard myself and go into corruptors and then into Broodlord, I'm okay with that. Even if it's a low economy game, if it makes sense. But yeah. I think the the whole just like the process of going Roach Ravager against Void Drake composition and then going into Corruptor against Archons and Stalkers. It just sounds <laughs> scary. Sounds incorrect. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> I like that you're uh, at least using the Corruptor though. You're literally peeing on his base. So that at least they get some value at this point. Yeah. Which is yeah, honestly. Yeah. But I feel like that's honestly why you're going to probably win the game here because you just you could actually do a lot with these just because he has like yeah. almost nothing okay here's here's a here's a shit show Oof. all right <laughs> you see his army in the main right you yeah. see you also because you like you got to think about this too don't only just wait to see his army you need to think like a step ahead where you expect his army so now imagine if your corruptors were not hovering over his main base imagine if your corruptors were hovering over his fourth base where is his army going to go? They're going to go to his fourth base. And what's going to happen as a result of that? His natural and his third are going to be exposed because his army is going to be out of position. And his main even. Like all those other bases are going to be exposed. But what's happening though is you're leaving your army over his main. So his army is going to come back to his main. And you're moving your Roach Ravager towards the front of his natural. So you're increasing your chances of running into his army. Because I'm going to really quickly look at everyone's vision. I have only yours on right now. And let's look and see at his fourth base. Imagine if your Roach Ravager was running along the left side of the map, down to his fourth. Yeah. There's nothing there. And now let's look at where the rest of his army is. It's all in the main. There's some of it in the natural, and there's a temp there's like a couple of units at his third. So you're running directly where he is, and there's a wide open base where he isn't, and you're pulling him over here. So it would make more sense if you're going to pull him here to attack over there. Yeah. And you, those are the things you get. You, honestly, you have to think about that shit as you do it. You can't just react to it. Because like, attack, attacking is natural now. This looks fucked here because you just get surrounded. You actually bust your way through because he doesn't have enough units, but you do lose a lot. Yep. Totally unnecessary. Too. And if you would have, uh, like, there was really nothing gained from that. I think you made him cancel his third again, but then he just re he's going to rebuild it. But if you actually killed his fourth base, you would actually have another base, like a Protoss who just loses another Nexus, and guaranteed you could have killed that fourth base and then got out, just like the other game we talked about. Uh, if you see his army in his main base with your Corruptor. And then here's the other thing. If your Corruptors run away, like down here into the open airspace, and your Roach Ravager gain all the aggro uh, at his fourth, as you kill it, he's chasing you, you run away, you're fine. You fly back into his main base, piss on the Nexus, and now you kill like another, another Nexus or something. Or kill yeah. a tech structure, because he's out of position again.
But that would make <coughs> sense, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Which is obviously why uh, I would. Oh, yeah. It's so much easier to make sense of things when you're not playing. And I, I can I can sympathize with you on that, and I will never I will never get too frustrated if I see you do something, even if it's multiple times incorrectly. Because playing the game and talking about the game are two totally different things. Yeah. This is kinda of why I want to do this analysis again and again with the kind of same scenario again, because you know, just getting it imprinted into me like yeah. What, what the fuck are you doing? Like, don't do this again. <laughs> what the fuck and are again, you doing? And again. Yeah. It's, uh, it's hard, man. These kind of things. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, I don't play to win. I play to learn this game. It sounds kind of. No, you've told me, and I, I think it's a good mindset. I think it's a good mindset. I think playing to win means that you're you're willing to accept mistakes. Yeah, even sure. because all you care about is a win, and if it nets you a win, you don't you think you played correctly, and that it would be, even though you won a game, you can still have played incorrectly. So improvement is actually if you think about improvement and not just a win or loss record, that is actually the fastest way to improve. Yeah, he he starts pulsing and unpulsing the game now. Hell yeah. Yeah, he's getting a bit <laughs> upset. <laughs> yeah, he's uh. He's he's pretty fucked. He's got like no money. He's like, I just guess I'll just make some archons so I can afford. <laughs> yeah, I said one minute because he had already paused the game. Yeah, yeah. Did Twice. he actually did he actually let you pause it or did he resume it? Yeah. No, no, I. He, he resumed it. Okay, that's what I thought. He was actually kind of nice about it that time. He didn't even let you answer. Well, yeah, he just made me answer. In the How game. do you defend that? Left the game. Oh, no, wait, you did answer. I'm just kidding. I thought he left the game right as he asked it. <laughs> Macro a bit better. I told him actually later, don't make so many cannons and um, pylons when you do the cannon rush. And he just said, ruffle. So OP and then blocked me. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. That is actually the answer. Yeah. yeah. He made. I was sure I was going to lose that game after that very poor defense he, beginnings. He killed. I'm not gonna lie. He killed like nine of your drones at the start of the game, or like eight of your drones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he killed with a fucking weird ass secondary cannon rush at your top middle base. He killed another couple ravagers, an overlord, another queen. Forced out five spines. His economy. Could have been like triple yours at that point. But he just never really made any. And also the entire Ken <laughs> Rush, he was sitting on like 14 probes. Yeah. So yeah, he, uh, he just doesn't know how to... Like he, he is 100% thinking about the damage he's doing, not about the follow-up to doing that damage. Yeah. Which is, I think, most people's common mistake. Yeah. Okay, man. Well, um... Uh I don't think it's much more to say about this game. It was yeah, I I think uh, everything the thing I wanted to know was was like in the first five minutes. Five I minutes. I agree. I think this game would have been completely avoidable if the game was a little bit better. Sure. But and it, it just in general, I think this game is another. It's another uh, example of you just. I think the biggest thing holding you back is your scouting. Because I I saw so many times when, you were just playing with fire right there and you almost got punished for it but it happened to work out here and there yeah and sometimes you did get yeah. punished for it but yeah just uh just go watch the prodigy voodoo people and you'll see what i mean that's your that's like your current play style when you don't scout <laughs> yeah that's just what i that's just what i uh imagined <laughs> <laughs> all right man you have any other questions about anything that we went over today at all um no i don't think so okay well uh, yeah. All right. Well, sounds good, man. But good shit. Good, good. Uh, replay. A couple of replay analysis. If uh, yeah. if anyone's on YouTube watching this, and you're thinking we kind of this was more of like a casual replay analysis, uh, it kind of was. It's because we we just did a previous one. I'll, I'm I'm going to upload both of these. They're going to be different videos, but they're going to be uploaded the same day. But we just did another one before this with very thorough. This one was more or less kind of like one of those games where. The very early of the game, the very early part of the game is very important, but then after that part, like how awful the opener was, the rest of the game is 
kind of looks like a shit show. It's it's not really something you should plan for. It's it's like a plan. It's like if it happens, it happens. But you shouldn't plan to be there. There's much better ways for the game to have gone, and uh, it's very simple to explain that. Like like we talked about, literally making hydras would have been better than a travager, and scouting for the composition correct composition that he's fighting against would have been better, and then also trying to just you know keep reads on economy. That's about it. That's literally all you had to do with this game to really net a win, and he still won anyways. But it was kind of risky. <laughs> Was so many bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there was really like you do like this casual kind of thing too. Was the, was nice. The what? Sorry. Yeah, it was nice to do this casual analysis, kind of just talking through a game, like not not really. Well, we knew, we uh, I knew and you knew that. Yeah, yeah. I everything to learn was in the early game, so I mean, it was nice to do the, like this casual type. <clears throat> oh, you said, sorry, I think you said, I, I, I swear to God, I thought you were saying catch all, not casual. No. Casual. Yeah, no, I, got, I, 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 I actually, context, I got it the, like the second time. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. wait, what's a catch all? What are you talking about? No, no. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. It's, it was, my pronunciation isn't perfect, I guess. Yeah. So. It, was, it was good, though. I, I feel like... I feel like it's kind of nice to know sometimes because sometimes you get in situations like this and you'd like to know what you're supposed to do, but it's it's very basic. It's not like super elaborate. It's really yeah. just try to make sure you have a lead over your opponent and make sure that you're not making an army that sucks balls against what your opponent's making. Because if you're both yeah. broke and he's making air and you're making something that can't hit air, well, you're just gonna fuck it. you're just gonna lose. Something as simple yeah. as that. Either way, anyways. I I, I guess I guess um, if you're watching this on YouTube some guy uh you can check out another replay analysis we did with ken rush which it, actually we went way in depth on it so yeah you guys i highly recommend if, i i think you upload that video too. I, I yeah i upload them all if you guys like this yeah. I'll, I'll just go into here so um anyways yeah. you know, muffin Sorry. first i'll just say muffin thank you for doing another one you're uh Thanks. you're a delight and uh i hope this helps <laughs> you all the time man i hope you keep advancing and improving and all that stuff and uh, yeah, man, thanks for doing it. Yeah, thank you, dude. Thank uh, you for taking the time. Yeah. And if you guys like this video and you want to see more like it, I do have not only coaching videos, but I also have replay analysis videos. This was specifically a replay analysis. Uh, I, they're all over the place on my YouTube channel. Just to go check out, basically just go to my YouTube channel and there's a boatload of learning content that you can use for StarCraft if you're interested. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, I hope you guys have a great night. Have a great day. And uh, take care of yourselves. Stay awesome. Peace, everybody. Goodbye.